Hello, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 43 of the Archaeologist Podcast, a show where we discuss everything and anything that has to do with Ark Survival Evolved. I am your host, Sean D. Knight, and with me are a number of experienced players that are here to offer their insights and opinions on the latest topics, strategies, and upcoming features or patches. As I call out our participants for tonight, say hello to the listeners and how many hours you have in Ark. Leg Day. Hello to the listeners. I have 2,637 hours. Rico? 37, 35 on uh, on the character I can no longer play and 6 on the new one. Thanks, Devs. Yeah, well, we will get to oh, that. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sensei. 1,900 hours. I'm rapidly catching Zach. Yeah, I think you said you are going to quit the game when you hit 2,000? At 2,000, I quit because that means I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Zen? Uh, 5,320? Gosh, it hates. At least Zach's higher than me. That's <laughs> quite a lot. That's quite a lot. <laughs> it is quite a bit. And that voice you heard is our guest for this week, Soul Recon. Hey guys, Soul Recon here. I've got three thousand six hundred and thirty-two hours, and I'm glad to be here today. <laughs> now, last week's episode, we pretty much closed out asking. Uh, if the devs will be adding any new dinos after the game is done and over with, uh, everybody seemed to be of the opinion. And uh, YouTube commenter HockeyBuzz555 says, In the dev kit, there is a Lamprey, so it's possible they could add that. There's also likely going to be more DLC, so it would make sense that more creatures would be added in the future. And then uh, Reptrillin added on the back of that saying, Not to mention the Phoenix, reference to a griffin by one of the devs. I believe they said they won't be adding new beasties till general game is done, like Ascension, Ascension etc., I believe. So more mythical creatures might be coming, that's true. Ooh. Yeah, I know, you're very fond of them. You know, I, 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 I loved my dragon. It's not my dragon anymore, it belongs to a dead character. Sorry if I'm a little bitter, this just happened. <laughs> you bitter? Just a little. <laughs> I'm the guy who had no alts whatsoever. Nope. I only went places in the open. Well, welcome um, to the alt game, boy. <laughs> and now my alt is my main. Yeah. And we will get that because, uh, actually, let's just go right to it. So, uh, Lucas Lever had a similar situation. He transferred to Scorched Earth and spawned at the bed, then disconnected. When he joins back, his character was gone. It's not on the server. And he was on, and when I transferred, anyone got any suggestions to help me, please? Uh, these stories make me so, like, terrified of transferring. I'll, well, I'll just go over, because that's pretty close to what I had happen. Although I hadn't actually spawned yet when it happened. That's mm -hmm. a bit of an oddity. I, uh, I was, the other night I was transferring off our server, and I clicked on the, our island, and as it pops up, I realize it says, you know, server 84, and I'm like, that's not where I'm supposed to be going. Okay, it brought me up to the character creation screen for some reason. I download character, selected mine, it says downloading character image, and it's taking way too long, and then I get the fun little, you know, you had a driver crash, and I'm like, wonderful. This has happened to me before. This has happened to a lot of my tribe mates before. This isn't anything to really worry about until I try and log back in on to 84 and no character and nothing in the download list. I tried going back to, you know, you know uh, 820, hoping it'd be there. Went back to, uh, even checked 8, hoping somehow it just, you know, sunspots have actually affected this game before, just so people know. So it's <laughs> weird, weird stuff can affect this game. And nothing. So I'm, you know, you, you have that moment where you freak out and then you get, uh, and then you pull, uh, pull your brain back in. You ask if anybody, you know, has gone through this before you start getting ready to send in your ticket. One of our friend, one of our tribe mates, Fox told me that she's had this happen a couple times and she just waited a few hours and the character just magically reappeared in the download list. So I took a nap and got back up a few hours later, nothing, went back to bed, finished sleeping, walked, woke up again, still nothing, nothing, no response from the devs, uh, and you, you would think something like this would be actually, you know, something they deal with quick. Because frankly, if there are decent coders involved, this is the kind of thing that they could fix without ever interacting with you. Yeah. They can just send you an email. We retrieved your character. It's been sent. Uh, the data has been uploaded uh, to this server. Go there and download the character. Done. So nothing. So goes through. I make a new character to get a couple dinosaurs out of the ark. And I made the character on a server that was completely unconnected to any of the three I was stuck between. Just to be on the safe side. And this is where it gets really weird again. As weird as having this ha ha losing your character after waking up in a bed. That's it's another one I've never heard of before. And 
I stand, I, I go download the dinosaurs, they pop out just fine, and I'm looking at my character's hand behind the inventory, and I realize it's wearing a glove, a painted glove. I was wearing a cloth glove that I had made on the trip over to our, uh, our base on that server. And uh, my buddy's just looking at me and going, why, where'd you get those clothes? I'm like, what? He's like, you're, you're wearing custom painted clothes with, with skins. <laughs> my character's entire inventory had just been downloaded onto my new character. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. At that point, I was, well, I mean, I'm still hoping the devs will answer the email and, or, you know, respond to the ticket and something might be doable. Because I'd mean, really like my level 100 back with all of my tech engrams and my imprintings. Yeah, in, my, in my experience, because, you know, we, we, we lose a lot of characters in the tribe mm-hmm. because we transfer so much. Um, lost characters are the biggest issue we have, and mainly because of the tech engram situation and tech transmitters and things like that. Um, more so than that is the imprint is coded to your character. And for the most part, whenever we have had characters restored, they, they don't come. They don't come with the imprints. What they they haven't figured that out yet. Right. I think, I think it's just because it's, um, it's such a grand game. And I think that they're, it's new territory for all these devs. Yeah. And I feel like they're tackling things as they as they come at them you know like for the most part of this game admin logging wasn't even a thing so if you had a crooked admin you wouldn't even know and it's not until recently that that has changed and i feel that the amount of issues in the game i can't imagine the ticket load that their the reps have to deal with you know like you know you're saying that i think that um they should be able to deal with it quicker but i can't imagine what a ticket system looks like for this game right now oh it's i'm sure it's yeah without bad. the well that's the, other thing. <laughs> the, the weird thing that a lot of people don't realize the reason when they restore your character it's not synced to your uploads is they didn't actually restore your character they got your they have your name they they literally just generate you a new character at the level you were at Right, and that's what ends up happening. And, and what they still can't do in the online environment is give you tech engrams or your imprint bonuses. And mm-hmm. so what happens is we've had at least 20 characters lost in our tribe. <clears throat> and when they, yeah, all they do is they give you the level 100. And that's basically it. You lose all your imprints, you lose all your tech, and they, you know, you're know, you forced to, to get it again. And it's frustrating because uh, with breeding, sometimes you're doing dinos for a specific reason. Um, especially if you're doing like a bullet soaker and you want that extra damage reduction. Yeah. Um, and you're doing imprint 100% imprint. That. Exactly. To lose 100% imprint on something, especially like a giga, you know, like an 11 day raise, it's it's very, it's off putting, you know, but you don't reach 3,000 plus hours without the, the addiction <laughs> level. So, indeed. <laughs> I managed to reach 3,700 hours without ever losing a character. <laughs> uh, you know, the worst part is you realize. The only reason I didn't this didn't bother me more was when you realize that you're transferring five to ten times a day, in the you're back of Russian your roulette. head, you start to you start to prepare yourself for the possibility of something going horrendously wrong. Mm. The only thing that I really irks me, because I, mean, I can get the other stuff back. I have our I have the last remaining member of our of our first successful large dragon uh raising, and it's no longer imprinted to anyone. Yep. Just, you know, it, it, it's it's a. I always took pride that I managed to keep that da- uh, that damn thing alive, and by no small measure was it the. You know, the dragons don't have armor; they don't have a saddle. You've got your imprinting bonus to protect the thing. That's it. Right. I, that's what we attuned the the imprint to is the equivalent of a prim saddle. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So I still have you my know, first one. I mean, I think I think the only way for them to actually give you your attacking room back would be the spawn. To spawn the boss into that server, and with the server lag as it is already on some servers, a boss just readying in out of nowhere and then dying would crash servers. I mean, we can mm-hmm. start to think about the complications it would be to just spawn in a boss and kill it, you know. And <laughs> oh, this... and the body, the body flies off randomly into space. And... Just, I mean, there's just so many things you're adding to it. You just you're, you're removing the ability of somebody else to do the boss at that time, and any allied member in the area is also going to get whatever engram is tuned to that boss and there's just a lot of complications so uh, they choose it, it, to just be nice avoid if, that. The, if the characters had a um unique id uh tags atta- data tags attached to them and there's some kind of you talk about this like what's the what's the term or the phrasing for for this what? oh thanks be away from your computer <laughs> <laughs> i mean dinos have unique ids ones. right now mm-hmm 
dinos very much have unique IDs as well as people. So yeah, but they, they have no way of. Uh, there's no. Um, he, he referred to it. To, um, it's basically a, a system for when you send data between secure servers. That oh, has a backup oh, oh, copy oh, saved yeah, yeah, yeah. at the original location in case. Oh no, yeah, yeah. No, the the code that does that. I mean, it, it, you want to have guaranteed atomic transactions between servers is what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. The, the, this whole like, I mean, imagine if the way we did our finances was the way Wildcard does their character transfers. When I transfer money. Between one account to another, just sometimes the money disappears. You sometimes know? it gets duped. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay, that'd be awesome if that happened. But uh, yeah. You need to have a system that operates on both sides. I and mean, basically, there's a waiting. There's a, a one side is waiting for the other side to send a verification uh, notice back. And if it doesn't get it, you just go back to the other one. I mean, I think that's going to come now in the um, in this now that that content is being released. I think now they're maybe going to start to look at avenues and things like that to better the the entire system. Well, that's part of the optimizing, and right? I, that's that's where duping comes in, where you had tribes personally crashing servers as they were uploading things. Yeah, the so, sad yes. part is though, this is the kind of code that I mean, this is not a complicated line of code. This is. I mean, it's a it's a pretty big oversight when you're when you're doing when when they release the transfer system that they did not have a security system like this. Well, I mean, go ahead. Then. Their their main thing is oh, it's a beta game. It, it, it's a beta, and the thing of it is is that these are things that are slowly worked out as you build to final release, and sadly, it's just something that was overlooked. I mean, I think what it boils down to is that uh, this is a group of people. Just like anyone else, and they they have this grand idea in their mind of what they want the game to be, and so they're jumping at all these ideas. And sometimes they don't take you know maybe the best avenues to get there. But um, I mean, it is what it is. Um, yeah, are there better ways to do it? Probably, most likely, yes. Uh, is that generally going to be implemented? No. I mean, these guys are good at what they do. Are they the best in the world? Maybe not. Oh, what they have come up with is a very decent game, especially for the price. Um, and it's just how this game is being developed, you know? Indeed, well said. And a uh, quick bubble service announcement. Whenever there's an update that's just been pushed through and you need to ca- transfer a character, make sure that the server you're transferring to is, has been updated because you are able to transfer your character onto a server that has been updated, but you won't be able to try, uh, transfer it off until it is updated. And all your your gear won't transfer in with you. Yeah, right. that is this, a risk that happens. Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, transferring anytime they're going to do an update anywhere near that update is just dangerous as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, with this whole you know civil war going on, we've actually found that um, our main servers have actually been severely behind in the update schedule, often being um, sometimes two patches behind. Um, I think two days ago, we were two patches behind all the other servers, and mm-hmm. we had a major yeah. issue of people transferring in. Uh, not being aware, like obviously, if the patch goes through, you know, two hours later, you're not expecting your server to be behind, and so we had people losing a lot of gear coming back in, and then we had all those people that were actually in trapped, and they yeah. couldn't get out. And we'll get to the uh, the big war going on right now as our main topic, but until then, Drake Play writes: Here's hoping they do release some more dinos. I might just try pushing towards getting some of my concept dinos suggested on the forums. Just need the artwork for them before I can uh, submit such examples, such as uh, the giant rideable hornet I suggested to you guys a while ago. I'm hoping there are future patches will rectify the issues with older dinos and maybe patch in to in new abilities such as the trike charge and the moth's ability to crop dust crops. I know I'm always looking forward to new weapons and ammos as well. I'm kind of a gun nut and tech junkie in that regard. I heard one of you guys mention a minigun, and I would certainly love some more heavy weapon love, such as a portable minigun with an optional ammo pack put on the offhand slot that shoots advanced rifle bullets, heavy machine gun which fires advanced sniper rounds, a submachine gun to take advantage of those advanced pistol bullets, lever action rifle maybe, grenade launcher, and a modern tier combat armor, a high level replacement for general purpose armors like hide and flak, as well as perhaps specialty armor. And a chainsword. Well, <laughs> and a chainsword. How is modern tier armor going to be different than Riot? Isn't that kind of modern tier? Uh, I, mean, I, yeah. I don't believe so. And not only that, tech tier. You know, one thing about the armor system that I really think needs a, a good a bit of attention is the way that it reacts to durability. Like, the, the Riot armor, you don't take much damage from bullets. You do from mm-hmm. uh, melee, and that is a great trade-off. I love that. It's, it's actually very 
realistic of more modern armors because Kevlar is really crappy against things uh, against sharp pointy things, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's great against you know slow moving, relatively dull objects. The problem is it doesn't act. We actually don't realize it because you don't take much damage. But you may live through the dozen bolts that eat you. But even if you have a really good armor, it might not survive those dozen bullets. Whereas mm -hmm. I have taken, I have drained a turret with 500 health and a ghillie armor. And the ghillie armor was barely damaged. I was almost dead, but the ghillie armor was barely damaged. That makes so little sense. <laughs> so, in terms of weapons, we need some new artillery, and I really want a type of mortar in the game. Uh, you know, howitzer. The uh, howitzer would be overkill, uh, especially well, for raiders. But a mortar, I think, would really change up the you, game for you, warfare. Yeah, a howitzer with a little carriage, you hook it onto a trike, and you ride it up to the battle line. <laughs> Come on, the cannon. That's yeah, I think I think the cannon is where that's really trying to make that appearance. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, you can't hook it onto a trailer onto the back of a trike. <laughs> I just want trikes <laughs> to be useful. Okay, I like trikes. You want you want a pullable platform saddle for the trike? Yeah. <laughs> or rocket pods. I'll take either. You know, as as we're at it, I want a tech saddle for the parasaur. Oh. <laughs> Do you want it to have a jet pack? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> and then I want to be able to put the, uh, what is it, the, the little parasaur appreciation saddle? What is the developer's the saddle or whatever is. Yeah, the saddle. founder's saddle. Yeah. <laughs> the founder's saddle that's been dumped more times than any other item in this game. <laughs> All right, so uh, Drake Plays had one last thing to say. He says, as for vehicles, while I can adapt to like in the motorboat, I'm looking forward to other potential vehicles. Messing around with the ATV vehicle is very fun and single player, but it is quite buggy and insanely loud. Various dossiers often depicted survivors using canoes, and I, for one, would love to push towards getting a hot air balloon, airship, and maybe even a modern tier uh, microlite or plane if it gets that far. The troll would be real if there were uh, there were, were lighter than aircraft in this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't resist vehicles. shooting one down every time I saw it. <laughs> yeah, I think we already have a problem with ground dinos as it is. I think the introduction of a vehicle is going to start removing some already uh, dated dinos. <laughs> I just I look at a... people on Raptors and go, it must be nice to be so new. <laughs> well, that's really bottom line is what ends up happening. It's the same with any game. The season introduction of new dinos kind of isolates the older ones and puts them out of date and mm -hmm. pretty much unusable. Yeah, speaking of uh, some of the new dinos, I'll be pushing old ones away. Uh, Reptilian, Reptilian also said, uh, while it's likely true you can't cheese bosses anymore, the Uteranus seems like something that can greatly assist in beating bosses. And the Uteranus, is the the, a.k.a. the Plasy Rax, has the, uh, the roar that can either... Scare enemy dinos or buff your dinos with a 25% increase in damage and uh, resistance. I mean, I understand the need for these new dinos like the, the healer and the Uteranus. Um, I think it's an interesting move that they're doing. Um, they, mm -hmm. they bring a little bit more dynamic to, to the fight and not just to the bosses, but to PvP in general. Um, we are seeing heavy use of the, of the buff dinos now on the, on the battlefield. Yeah. Um, more so than it was before, and I think that's I think that's good because it introduces a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more change and different approaches and different strategies that you can take towards combat. Not only that, the healing pick and how they instantly changed up the meta of mm -hmm. how Bronto pushes were going on and how people instantly started looking for what's the best way that I can increase their food stats but have the minimal amount of farming needed during yeah. the battle. And, oh, absolutely. And it makes a use of Dodo Kibble as right, something see, that you always have. Right, you see now people, you know, 40 Dodos in a pod trying to farm mm -hmm. up Dodo Kibble for this pick. Yeah. Yep. And, and, like, it changes Dodo Kibble to where... I used to use Dodo Kibble as like a safety net for when I was breeding right. before water stasis. Like it was a hundred food that I could put on a dino to make sure if someone was in render, it, my dino didn't die. But now that Dodo Kibble is used for something else that I can also, you know, use the thousands of Illuminati Dodo stacked eggs that end up at the base. <laughs> you know, back in the day uh, when, when we first got uh, customizable um, recipes, one of our tribe mates came up with a rather oh, crazy yeah. one involving Dodo Kibble. And 
this literally involved me bringing him 1600 dodo kibble to make the recipe not to not to make the actual item just to put in the thing so he could record the recipe and um we worked out the math for it and uh they shortly made it uh pointless because you couldn't benefit from it anymore but for about a week if we had ever needed to give a giga unlimited stamina we could have for half an hour And nothing's more scary than a Giga that will not run out of stamina. I mean, can you imagine that? Being able to sprint with a Giga for an extended period of time? A scary thought. All right, let's move on. So, Until they leap off a mountain and fly halfway across the map. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a mountain. A small pebble can do the same thing. A small, yeah, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Das Hog Machine had a comment for us and said, uh, Haha, when I saw the title of this podcast, episode 40 is he's referring to, I had a feeling this would be based off my Reddit post, PvP, How to Lose Less When Rated. And you are correct, sir. That was the inspiration for episode 40 of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it, because we certainly learned quite a bit and shared some good stories as well. Now, Hurio commented, saying, We are using breeding boats. It works for Quetzals, Brontos, probably all diners with platforms. They can't stay on top of rafts, so they stay at the fallen animation. If you put walls, they don't fall and stay with minor food consumption. To use the raft, you need to lower the hemp foundation. The best thing is that the player doesn't get stuck like with the fence a nest. So I was joking about breeding boats, but apparently that is a thing. Huh, who knew? That's well, definitely, real uh, yeah, it's definitely a new, new one. I haven't thought about that. I mean, uh, to be honest, like status breeding is obviously something that we need to shy away from at some point, but... <laughs> But well, for now, yeah. we're going to take every single advantage we get. We need right, to get exactly. used to not using it, because sooner or later, it is going to disappear on us. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember, I remember the alphas back before it was even a thing would literally shoot people on sight for getting near the breeding area because mm-hmm. they're bringing things out Breaking of stasis. stasis. Yeah. yeah, I mean, right now with stasis breeding, there's a huge issue of uh, food consumption. If if the ping is too high on the server and he's mm-hmm. in stasis, they won't eat. And they end up um, starving to death with food under inventory. So there's always a risk reward when you're stasis breeding. Mm-hmm. Indeed. All right. So uh, there are a bunch of new badges this week. Uh, some interesting, some significant. In uh, 258.4, they made alpha leads more common on the island and made them give five blubber items rather than just one. They also made the alpha megalodon slightly more common. In 258.42, they fixed collisions on gorilla and dragon arenas. Yeah. I mean, we got a. The arenas themselves were changed quite a bit. Uh, to 58.44, fixed babies sometimes starving at low server update rates. So anything that decreases mortality rate is always good. They also fertil- uh, also made it so that fertilized microraptor eggs will not decompose on the ground anymore. So you can actually incubate them. <laughs> Interesting. Handy. Indeed. Uh, Something two- that works properly. <laughs> 258.45. Uh, the alpha squid now drops some regular squid tentacles again. I don't know why they stopped that in the first place. Then, let's, ah, yes. 258.5. They have improved spider projectile aiming and this, and then they also fixed some boss arena collisions, and this goes into 258.6, which just released, I think, today. It was a 1.4 gigabyte patch. Which introduced a new Primitive Plus update, so there's some stuff going on there. Updated host setting menus, updated various sounds, but here's the good one. Change the spider to be able to attack and shoot weapon while moving, and also the now the rider can aim the weapon. And this goes into a rebalanced brood mother. And that, according to Jad and Tails, AI improvements. She'll spawn mil- minions more efficiently, also dangerously. The spider webs from these minions are much more effective than they were previously. She'll be better at targeting when people are out of range slash too high for her to reach and will shoot skill shots better. Reason for the change was to make the creature not exploitable in the sense that she wouldn't be able to damage you because of a height difference or you get it stuck, etc. As well as to make it more of a threat. Its health damage has also been decreased in this update to make up for these changes. Yay. So, I love all of that. The only thing I really wish they would do to the spider buff is let them climb up walls like an actual spider. <laughs> yeah. Now you're just asking for crazy. But we really gotta test out how effective the weapon is now. You know. And the uh, brood I mean, mother, the f- so we can no longer, I guess, uh, reading from Jad's post, 
I guess when one of the tactics we used to do was get it to go down into the gorge and we just stay above it, just shooting down at it. I guess that's going to be a lot more difficult because she'll be able to hit us now. So if I understand this correctly, though, the the alternate tactic of hitting it with Rexes is still going to work, but the spiders along the side are going to be a little bit more deadly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's to the point where the Rexes that we're seeing today are so out of control that it doesn't even matter. Yeah. The, the, that buff... Um, all it does is it gives you more experience inside the the boss arena because you're killing more targets now. Indeed. You no, know, there is something to be said though about the fact of uh, the Rex is being out of control. They always said that the, no matter what, they wanted the Rex to be the king of the arc, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, you can't really argue it. I mean, people always have the different debates about what's a, in the end. The Rex is powerful, consistent, and with when you have an impressive bloodline, let alone one of the insane bloodlines. I mean, you're, you're, you're just talking about something that'll just nom through anything you need it to and can usually take enough of a beating to get you through whatever you need it for. Mm-hmm. Real, real quick, I wanted to say like um, about the spiders being able to crawl up the wall like the Thilo can, but the spiders cannot. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's just a little know. odd to me. But uh, on the Rex topic, yeah, uh, breeds right now are absolutely insane. Really what it is is the amount of time that it takes to breed Rexes. It, um, it becomes more viable to breed. A multitude of Rexes rather than Giga or any other type of Dino. Yeah. Moving on. Just a reminder for everybody, uh, Primal Survival is no longer in active development, uh, just like Survival of the Fittest. This wow. game from Jen. I did not hear this. Mm-hmm, and she goes on to say, it doesn't mean it won't be revisited in the future, but it's not something that is currently being worked on. And uh, this was posted by Air401 on Reddit. So, yeah, unfortunately, that sucks. When did this post? This went right over my head. Uh... Yesterday, actually. Or so I people, say pe- Monday, the 5th. Oh, man, I'm out of the arc loop. So people have been begging, absolutely begging, for some fixes to go into Primal. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm pretty shocked. I think it's once again that Wildcard is once again trying to buckle down and just focus on the core game because they're at the finish line. They're getting there, and they really need to focus on... Optimizing. And they don't want to pull a star citizen and keep on adding more <laughs> yeah. to their, uh, oh, sorry, language, um, <laughs> t- to their plate and end up adding another year or two to the development cycle. Yeah, I think it's been too long in cycle already. So, I mean, okay, so I totally get the idea of trying to focus on the core game, get it right, make it work. But I guess the decision I'm questioning is bringing Primal in, in the first place if they didn't think they could finish the job. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that when they brought it in that they did think they could, you know, like going back to what we were talking about earlier about them um, biting off more than they can chew, it's easy to, to imagine this future that you want for your company and for your game. But once you start actually working on it and working towards that, some some of those goals just don't pan out the way you want it. And mm-hmm. I feel like Primal and Survival of the Fittest were that kind of scenario where they had this really great idea that they wanted to execute, but due to lack of staffing or due to how complex, you know, the game has become for them on a dev's perspective, um, it's just something that in the immediate future they probably can't handle. Yeah. Well, I think uh, when it came to uh, Survival of the Finest, they were seeing all these other bigger companies that had the resources you know, really focusing on making sure that their game had multiplayer so that they'd be able to retain a player base more. And uh, I think they were also hoping to really get into the esports scene and hopefully bring in a secondary source of income and revenue for the developer. Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of options for this game. This game is a sandbox, you know. Oh, yeah. They have, they have so many options for this thing to go, but it's really about first they have to polish this game. It's very raw with so much and so much mm-hmm. changes so drastically not just like with the flyer nerf that happened recently but i mean if you you look at top tier pvp you notice the meta changes very frequently and that comes with you know the patches and yeah it's we don't know how this game's going to end up really we don't know when it's finally released it wasn't too long ago that brontos were were ixnade from actually being bullet suckers because it took forever to get them to the the fight Mm -hmm. because you could literally fly your kitzels over there fly your air fleet over you know, you find something else to do a bullet sucker or a cluster drop with your Ketzels. Now, you, now with the transmitter, it's like, okay, Brontos are the first thing in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we got our pairs, our pair racers because, you know, they're still viable. They're still pretty quick. People are talking about Diplos now, like how quick Diplos can be, you know, 
uh, leveled up in health and how high they can go. And then people with the still laugh saddle, at me before that. <laughs> I keep talking about Diplos and people keep laughing at me. We can have a raid bus, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, well, guess who's going to get the last laugh? This guy. I we mean... Tourists shoot but, you right off the Diplo. That's yeah, the only they concern. <laughs> nah, they do. <laughs> I mean, but like cluster grenades were fixed. Then you have the new tech grenade that people are using. I wouldn't say fixed. I would say changed. Well, yeah. Well, mm. I mean, I, I don't think it was the developer's original idea that when an auto turret would track an explosive, that it would then detonate into seven more explosives, and then it would be <laughs> thrown th- by 10 or 15 people jumping off a Ketzel. Like, I, I don't th- think... Yeah, I think I have a different opinion on that. I think I feel like... You know, their intention is one thing, but when they see what some of these tribes can really do with that intention, it's when they'd be like, oh, wait, uh, maybe we, we were shouldn't not do it that, that. way. Yeah. Right, exactly. You know, it, that's the thing. When, uh, you know, the dev- developers have a certain idea for a concept they put out, but usually the player base is very good at uh, coming up with new ways. They're very inventive. And to the point where developers are like, okay, we did not even... We didn't see that, that coming. Option. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, look at the the whole veggie cake scenario. Not veggie yeah. cake. I'm sorry. Uh, beer and veggie cake scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for the most part, when it was introduced, it was oh wow, this is great. This is you know a decent thing. And time passed, and nothing made of it. And then once people figured out that if you give a Bronto beer, um, you know, the soup buff. And then you feed it veggie cakes that, mm-hmm. hey, guess what? This thing's never going to die. Exactly. Oh, so. rock golems with the ascendant saddles oh, from the Santa drops. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, before <laughs> they did the patch tone. They were so nice. Right. It's it's all, you never know what someone is going to do with the product you create until you get some of these really genius people who really abuse the meta and abuse all these different numbers and they figure out something that just blows you away with what they can come up with as far as abusing, you know, whatever the meta is. Exactly. And uh, it's been a long time for this to be going on. I mean, we just hit the two-year anniversary for Ark Survival Evolved. This I can't on believe June it. June 2nd was its two-year anniversary, yeah. And uh, we got a special evolution event, the normal two-time harvesting, two-time entertainment, two-time experience. However, they then added in two times baby mature speed, two times a catching and gestation speed, and the two times mating interval. So, uh, as oh, many it was people actually think, mm-hmm. it was actually double. It wasn't two times. It was it was more. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah because it was two times their... based off of the original. Yes. Yeah, yes. Remember the evolution events one and a half. So, for those yeah, that, that didn't know, true. this was more than the regular evolution event. So, what do you guys all think about the increased rates? Because there's already, I mean, there's already, I mean, you kind of have to expect this, but there's already forum posts that said, like, hey, the increase rate should be like the base rates. I know. <laughs> I knew Sean's attitude was going to be. And I don't want the harvest range changed, but the baby maturation, A catch, and all that, I think needs to be increased. <laughs> yeah, I think with fair. with the, the evolution events today. happening, what I find, um, especially at the level that we farm, it's d- during the week, no one wants to farm. I know, I'm the same. I just Everyone. wait for the weekend. Now. Everyone waits for the weekend, yeah. And, I mean, rates are what they are because of the way the game has turned out to be. I mean, a lot of people who are new to this game, they wouldn't understand what playing on One X was before. Yeah. And it was really tough to get going. And I think that's what they're trying to... They're trying to make it easier to get going. Um, but just with any, any type of patch, you know, whatever happens to the general community, um, Mega Tribes get influenced so much more because of it yeah, indeed now um along with their announcement of the two-year anniversary and all that they posted a, a progression of all the changes they brought to the game during the two years but i was really hoping for a, a graphic of you know during this time so many dodos have been killed or so many rexes have been tamed and bred you know something like a lot of older or bigger studios will normally do they'll put out a graphics like You'll see all kinds of graphics for the Elder Scrolls. It was a missed opportunity. It I mean, really uh, I used to, I've said before that I've played Plantside a lot in the past, and uh, they're really all about metrics. So they tell you exactly how many people died, where on the map they died. They make heat maps and all kinds of things. And mm-hmm. I mean, I have to imagine that the, the uh, statistics on the amount of death, the amount of breeding, 
the amount of uh, taming that has occurred on all the arcs across all these t- you know two years that this game's been out has been insane. <laughs> it would have been amazing to see those numbers if they had them. Yeah. So it would be arc two year anniversary. Five million two hundred and sixty five C four dude, six thousand two hundred and thirty seven <laughs> elevator shafts, seven thousand two hundred and seventy five platforms, oh. and one server wipe. You know, okay, so maybe the only statistic I really would have been interested in is seeing a heat map of where people built. Yeah, I would love to know that. Well, we know that they've actually come up with that. When they were originally working on the um, the Allosaurus issue of them spawning inside bases, um, Mm -hmm. one of the devs had posted a image. An image. um, One of the users had posted an image of the um, average base locations and how. Behemoth Gates kind of sectioned off certain spawn User locations. Out of your channel. And I remember seeing that they, they actually do have those kind of heat maps, you know, of, of where the general population builds, but it's not something that's made public. I wish they would. I, I, I'd be really curious to see what the most popular spots were. Now, DM Strats uh, has a problem with the uh, Fuzzy Rex's Fear Roar. And he wishes that the devs would add a cooldown to the Uteranus' sphere. He says, Me and my tribe mate just lost our two best 360 Thylos due to this completely ridiculous Dino and their Carnos. Stun locked for a solid minute. 20 seconds is ridiculous enough, but to come out of it and be feared again for another 20 seconds while not being able to actually run away because we were pinned, add a cooldown for being able to be feared again by UD to try and stop stuff like this from happening. I mean, it's a brand new Dino. It was just released. Guys, yeah, uh, but still, out? though, you think you'd be more cautious going in the second time after being feared the first, or take it out with ranged weapons. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just it all comes down to, um, you know, they release a dino. Um, they have no intention. They have no real idea how it's going to impact the community mm-hmm. until they get out there and they see it being tested across, you know, hundreds and hundreds of servers. So, I'm pretty sure that there will be. Um, Either buffs or nerfs coming in certain aspects of that dino. Yeah. Now, uh, a suggestion from Afrius Del Rio, and it is at an Are You Sure pop up when given a tribe member ownership and he writes, Yesterday I accidentally transferred ownership of a large tribe to the wrong member because I was unfamiliar with the new layout. I think that you should have to accept the transfer of ownership multiple times before it actually does it because this could potentially do a lot of damage in large tribes. Um, I'm all for. F- the are you sure pop up at least coming up once before making it permanent for transfer and ownership <laughs> being the owner of the black knights tribe uh, <laughs> my biggest my biggest fear is giving ownership to someone and i agree i think it's um i think all aspects of admin management system needs to have some kind yes. of you know pop up box i remember one of my first admin tasks in Black Knights was to remove admin from someone else. And I accidentally removed them from the tribe. And back then we mm-hmm. had um, tribe owned dinos and we lost a lot of bullets that day. We have had a couple tribe mates accidentally leave the tribe when they thought they were trying to rank them somebody else, but they like, kicked themselves out of the tribe. Yeah, it's, it, it happens, man. It, it really does. So. Pop-ups are definitely something that's needed Pop-ups. for this. <laughs> Pop-ups, and then I think just making the the admin menu a little bit easier to use. Yeah. I still feel that it's a little clunky. It, it really is, and it's kind of confusing. Right. I think, I think they, like, <clears throat> menu interactions is one thing, but when you reach administrative side, I think there needs to be a, a little bit of a different class of menu, mm-hmm. like a little bit more industrial. Yes, definitely. Now, uh, a suggestion from Silver Bullet 1989. He simply says, a motorboat needs a horn. Beep, beep. I think I'd like a foghorn on a I was going to say, it's going to be a foghorn on a car horn. <laughs> no, 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 no. Late 70s Chevelle horn with the little, you know, bull horns on top. The, <laughs> or like, like a cucaracha, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that'd be perfect. Just roll up on the fob and be like, beep, beep. Uh, yeah i I do like that suggestion maybe maybe they could offer customizable or you know customizable uh horns that they could also sell for some deals as little microtransactions you know give it a a default horn and then if you want something customizable well they've got something you can buy for like a buck 
Yeah, I think they have a, a lot of uh, ability to do that thing. I know that once once my PvP life is done, I'm definitely going to be RPing a little bit on the PvE yeah. side of Ark. <laughs> making making boats that don't have to have 20 turrets on them and 5 plantex type thing, you know. Making something yeah. pretty. <laughs> I can just see him now. He logs over to the RP server. And he's the old hermit on the mountain. <laughs> Back in my days, kids, I made 20,000 auto turrets an hour. A great war was fought on this land. <laughs> Much blood was spilt here. <laughs> Some we lost many came from the other. that day. <laughs> so much hey, unnecessary blood. <laughs> so much Fifty hate. of my fab snipers were stolen. No, it was. Oh my god, it was like ninety-seven. But yeah. Ooh, <laughs> oh, ooh, okay, okay. Ouch! Ouch! That that's a cringe. Ow. All right. So another suggestion comes from Mr. Shatterune, and he says, "Small jingle for elevator music," and writes. Only when the ele- elevator is operational, you know, elevating or de-elevating, de- de- uh, have a little elevator music. This will add to immersion, and I'm sure all of us would love it. Whenever you say elevator and megatribe in the same phrase, a lot of people start to get the <laughs> bad vibes, so. Yeah, I switch. <laughs> I, I like the idea, but I think I would probably want to kill somebody after the 10th or 15th time of going on the elevator. Especially if it's a tall, very long elevator. <laughs> I mean, we've got a big, pretty fairly decent long one at uh, Treetops or in the Redwoods. Yeah, Thanks. I mean, it's Thanks. all, it's, it's all going to be optional. <laughs> I love how you had to clarify that it was in the Redwoods when you're like talking about a treetop. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we have a treetop. It's in the Redwoods, by the way, not the stone biome. No. Well, wasn't there uh, at one point people were somehow able to make it so they could build in some of the really large trees on the island? I could have sworn that used to be a thing back in the early days of Ark. That they somehow glitched a base into them. Oh, boy. Wow. Maybe I'm just CNL and making it up. I I don't know. <laughs> All right, final final Reddit post of the the week. Grandma Mayo simply titled it one two three screen names and writes. Anyone else think this is ruining Arc? I believe cross Arc transfers were to promote more PvP. But if you can't tell where people are coming from because of one two three or Bob names, what fun is it? Sure, you can kill their dinos, but ninety percent of the time the players don't even bring dinos in, and their names are usually one, two, three, Bob, etc., etc. And if they bring dinos in, they usually wait until the whole tribe is offline to hit. I love the transfer of materials and being able to join any server I like. I really do. But using those screen names is killing it, to be honest. A lot of these guys that grief do it because they know they can get away with it. I, I tend to agree. I think that um, people are confusing battle metrics with Steam. Um, it was never intended to be able to track players by their Steam name. And really, it was all about the mystery of who is coming to your server. And if you bring a dino, you bring that extra risk of being tracked. I think people... Are, I think the 1, 2, 3 is, is got its pros and cons. Um, for the most part, at the top tier, everyone knows where you play. So it's irrelevant. But I think it really brings out how Ark was supposed to be played. You're not supposed to be able to track characters. You're mm-hmm. supposed to only be able to track dinos. Yeah. When when transfers originally were on, and the Chinese would literally go from server to server wiping them, like, you didn't know what server was a Chinese server. Like, you didn't get to, to see what their Steam name was, like, where they were on a battle metric site. Like, that was not implemented yet. Right, so that was like, the mystery. Yeah, so like literally you would just start seeing boxes come in and literally the entire server in Global would be like, Chinese are here, everyone get to your stations. And literally entire servers would mass together to push off an invasion. Like I think that's what makes a transfer system fun and enjoyable. I do agree, like one, two, threes, the Hydra Steam names, yeah. But like Sol was saying at the higher tier end, Everyone knows what server Jimmy Wong plays on. Everyone knows what server uh, BK's on. Everyone knows where Barry Seals is at. Everyone knows where... Like, they don't know maybe all the servers, but they know the main servers. And normally the people that they're hitting know exactly where they're playing from. I think it, um, it all stems back to 
uh, Mazion in, invasion video line that he was doing where he like he actually had to stop PvP servers because people were afraid of literally getting wiped after being on his his video series. Mm-hmm. And like people were like, "Don't give out our server number. Like you were never here. We'll show you what we got, but you can't you can't show our server anywhere." And um, it's always a mystery. Like you have people that have literally auto turreted entire islands, foundation spanned entire islands. Um, as soon as someone spawns into a server, someone's checking battle matrix. Like there's a lot more to this game now of tracking people, and I think people are getting a little bit antsy when they can't track someone. Like when a Bob comes into your server, there are so many Bobs at original launch because no one realized you could change your character name. <laughs> yeah, I lumped those kinds of people into the same ones that thought it was a good idea to eat narco berries when narco is in the name of the. Yeah, berry. I'm one of those people that if any, yeah, yeah, someone yeah. does any, if I see too many one two threes, I'll log in within within a span of time. I get real nervous. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean a lot. Of and then is... I tend to start span, uh, sending out uh, sending out direct messages to the uh, to tribe heads and going get out on patrol. Well, like people yell at me because. I always keep my Steam name one two three. I don't care where I'm going, and people are like, "You need to change it because every time you come back in, it doesn't say tribe member. It just it says one two three. <laughs> and I'm like, "But I'm transferring to other servers all the time. Like I don't want to transfer to a server. Someone see my Steam name come on, go to Battle Metrics, realize what server I'm coming from, mm-hmm. and then start coming back over and drag something back to the server. Right, and that that pretty much bottom lines out it's because of battle metrics that you can be tracked like you're not supposed to be able to be tracked and so normally where you'd be like okay i'm gonna go visit my friends on x server i don't want them involved but they can't track me now it's like i gotta be one two three because if i go with my original name then my enemy is going to make them an enemy and i don't necessarily want that mm-hmm. and like so many people nowadays like we still have people logging in our server and going oh get prepared to be wiped I'm part of the Spartan Alliance and <laughs> we're going to bring 40 people in and we're just like yeah, yeah just move on because literally if you were we would see those 40 people log in at once no and you wouldn't anything. say anything exactly. like, right. just be dead yeah, we, we, just, we had some guys claiming to be scouts for some tribe we'd never heard of today and my only response to Global was if you were scouts, you wouldn't be messing with noobs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I've I, it's been to the point where I've been on a, on one of the sisters' courtier servers, and I've had somebody come in and say, um, "I'm with Black Knights. Get ready to be white." <laughs> <laughs> we had someone claiming that <laughs> uh, about a week ago, and we just were all laughing, going, "Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything." Yeah, I'm like, "Yeah, okay. Why don't you come down the channel to me real quick so I can talk to you about that." Like, what do you mean? Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, I'm an, oh, I'm the owner of Black Knights on, on our center server. Oh, you don't know my name? Okay. <laughs> why, why don't you tell me your server number, buddy? Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Yeah, then log off. <laughs> one, two, three, Survivor. Oh, yeah, I love this. Yeah, oh. One, two, three, Survivor. I love the Survivors. They are the best thing. Because, like, when they first started happening, people were like, who named themselves Survivor? Oh yeah, you did. That just means they're talking from the character uh, creation, right? right? Yeah, no one. Yeah, that's what I thought. No one do that. Like everyone's like, "Why did you name yourself Survivor? Like, what the heck's going on?" Yeah, no. I mean, the reality is, like you said, it's like, um, okay, I'm gonna go in there tonight, just myself. I'm gonna make the fob, and then we'll all just log in, and we won't say a word. Mm-hmm. Yep. I went on a, just uh, after, you know, the Alliance was done with Server 1, I wanted to just, you know, take a look at the, the Havoc and see, like, what bases were still the most intact at what locations, what they were built of. You know, what what of their bases basically look like, you know, they more or less weathered the storm until you could bring, you know, full numbers there. And knowing there'd be no one on the server, there'd be no one in, in you know, talking in global or anything... Me and the guy that were with me, rule one, don't say anything at all, period. It didn't matter where you're going. If you're if you're there and you don't want to be noticed, you don't say anything. anything yeah. yeah, you can't and if, you, if, 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 you, if you have someone run yeah. off, if you can avoid being noticed by anyone, you do that. And if someone does notice you, you act like a noob. 
That's level. why not invited to these things. <laughs> I the logged onto the server. The first brag. thing I say is, "Guys, I just died. I'm spawning at the farm." <laughs> that was. I couldn't believe that happened. Uh, for for us, as I remember we were doing a server invasion, um, and we got caught. We're all level. We're all level 100. <laughs> We're like, yeah, we're just new guys, you know, just looking for <laughs> eight level one hundreds <laughs> dropping metal foundations. We we sure bought these accounts on are. eBay. Uh, it's not what it looks like, guys. Yeah, you guys, we're new to the server. Plop that that reminds me, you know what time I <laughs> don't know what we're doing. Pop another foundation. See, really, don't know what was going on. Pop another well, foundation. Well, no, what, what actually happened was, I mean, we did end up getting kicked off, um, but we were pretty, <laughs> we were just having a blast that time. But mm -hmm. what the guy happened was he landed on his pterodon right in front of us. Like, it was eight of us, and we made a circle around him, and he landed his pterodon. I don't know what he was expecting that was going to happen. But that pterodon died. <laughs> you know that that reminds me that you know the the uh, this is what it looks like. Back in the day, there used to be this thing we we do on server eight where we'd uh, we basically was counting coup instead of you know fighting with your neighbors, you just try and sneak up into their base and like spray paint them. You know, go graffiti. <laughs> and um, there's this uh, taming pen that somebody had set up right near where we were always traveling through. So. I snuck over there one day, pulled out the spray painter, start going. All of a sudden, I just hear that telltale sign of a uh, of a pike coming out. I turn around, there's a guy standing there with no pants. <laughs> and my first thought was, uh oh, I'm gonna squeal like a piggy. And the second, the only thing I said was, this isn't what it looks like. And then I tried to spray paint him and run away. Didn't work. Well, the running away <laughs> did, but the spray painting him didn't work. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get into the main topic. So another big war is going on. Spartans, BLDX, their allies for up until this point have fought VVG. They've fought Mercosul and Cobras. But this time, uh, there's a different kind of enemy they're dealing with. And this is a tribe called the Care Bears. And this is and uh, fighting them is Spartans, uh, the Black Knights, and some of their more friendly tribes. Now, um, Soul Recon, you are the owner of Black Knights. And you, more than anybody else, can tell us who are the Care Bears? Where did they come from? Uh, just to clarify, I am the owner of Black Knights on the center server. We yeah. have two other yes. owners, but okay. <clears throat> the Care Bears is a conglomeration of who were originally the Care Bears, which is a small tribe that used to help us, and basically some Black Knights that kind of defected and have joined them um, due to unreconcilable differences that we've had within the tribe. Mm -hmm. And so, um, for all intents and purposes, then, this is kind of a civil war? Um, it started as a civil war. It's escalating now to a little bit more than that because they are bringing in um, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type. Mm -hmm. And so they're bringing in people that we have fought in the past to kind of help them. Oh, come on now. Jimmy Wong is a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 21 hours in a cage, you get to really know a guy. You know, um, for yeah, those not informed, maybe it might be helpful to say what started the uh, Civil War. I had said earlier that uh, I'm only going to really talk about the... Yeah, from things, your perspective, what From you, my perspective, right, what I feel know. is factual. It, it, it's really a conflict between leaders, um, basically Rosenblood and Lomo, who... Rosenblood is the overhead leader of Black Knights, kind mm -hmm. of ruling over all of us, and then we have sub-leaders that all form kind of like a leadership council. Lomo was on that council, and he had disagreements with Rosenblood that kind of ended quite sour um, with the tribe, and he decided to pull out of Black Knights and take some of the members with him that followed him, basically. And um, he was able to communicate to other members and get them to follow him as well. Yeah, so schism was created. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, it's rough to kind of know everything that happened. Even I'm not convinced that I know everything that went down. Um, what I do know is that, um, or at least my logic behind it, the reason that I'm participating in this fight is because when they decided to leave, we offered them the opportunity to leave with their personal effects. And they took more i'm not saying all of them but s someone definitely did took more than they were supposed to take mm -hmm. 
and that didn't sit well with me as the main processor for Black Knights to see my storage depot emptied was very off-putting and that's what pretty much just forced me to double up my efforts and kind of help with this war Mm -hmm. yeah now um there's been some crazy stuff going on and because you're fighting people who are former tribe mates a lot of things being said bit of vitriol being heard at each other one interesting thing and this was streamed by pepper jc who is with the care bears an eight-page dossier was apparently allegedly leaked to him uh which was written and to talking about him, his allies, and service he's been on, and was allegedly written by someone in Spartans or Black Knights? It was a third-party document. Um, okay. There's information on there. It was presented to us. I, if somebody knows the origin of it, they haven't come forward. Um, it was just presented to us, but it was also presented to us in secret. It wasn't supposed to be distributed or anything, so that leak was, you know, I, I don't know who's responsible for the leak. But the dossier um, had a lot of incorrect information in it, which... Uh, I would hope the people involved would realize that it meant that none of the leaders from any of the tribes involved wrote the dossier as there was players being confused. Like there is a person called Peppers and then there's Pepper JC, Mm -hmm. two two very different people. And that dossier portrayed them as the same person. So that already tells you that the document wasn't written by one of the leaders of any of the tribes involved. But yeah, the document... um, there's been a lot of allegations as far as doxing and things like that, but um, I, I only covered the document briefly. Um, so the only thing I remember being on there was Pepper JC's real name, mm-hmm. um, which is very uh, on his patient. Right. Uh, most of that was public knowledge on his Twitter. Uh, yeah. So I really don't know uh, more as far as the doxing, um, but it's a war scenario. So we have to take all kind of things kind of, you know, uh, Seriously. For, yeah. Yeah. Um, but also with a grain of salt, like what's the mm-hmm. truth behind all the things that we hear? Because everything is going to be coming to perspective at this point. Yeah. Now, um, you've been uh, attacking what two or three servers that the care bears are on, and the main one I believe you guys are focused on is five sixty nine, and you guys have got an extensive fob uh, on that server. The Twitch yeah. ratings are really high. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, to be just purely objective about it, um, we were a team before. Mm-hmm. We we were good at what we did, um, working with Spartans when we were when we were all a whole team. I think we were really good with what we did, and I think that is why the FOB has to be the way it is. I think none of us underestimate what we're facing. We know who's on the other side because they've been brothers in the past, and mm-hmm. we know what they're capable of. And we'll, it's it's the t- the highest tier of arc that you can imagine is is being fought over there right now, and so. Every measure has to be taken, and I know it's easy for people on the Twitch to say, "Oh, why, why, why don't you just do this?" Um, yeah, and I was going to ask, uh, what is different about the war between Care Bears and Spartan and Black Knights than your previous wars? It's the knowledge of the enemy is so high right now. Mm-hmm. We know we know each other's strategies. We know each other's weaknesses. Everything. Yeah, we you know play. the weaknesses of the bases. We know every detail of, of your enemy which is really dangerous but it's also a little interesting when it comes to becoming a better player because now it's when we're really tested to to be greater right like mm-hmm. um they to not to just be brief about it they managed to get themselves into our underworld and they cause a lot of damage and we've gotten into theirs and we've caused a lot of damage but it really makes us look and revisit our own selves as a team and how we've set up defensively because enemies in the past have been tough to deal with but i think this is this is the next tier right here which is Mm -hmm. where you take the best teams and you pit them against each other and now what what was so successful for many months before is now not even remotely close to enough to be able to defend against these kind of tactics like these are really good players on both sides and I think it's pushing everybody to be even better. You know, whoever ha- to be more innovative is going to have the upper hand. Ha- right. Having watched um, some Twitch streams on both sides, it is kind of interesting to see. Like, I actually do think, at least as an observer, um, there's a certain level of respect 
uh, for both sides. I'm not used to seeing. Like, normally, I watch a lot of Twitch streamers on Ark, and normally there is a lot of vitriol, like, oh my god, these guys are shit, blah, 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 they're cheating, they're under map, whatever. I'm not hearing a lot of that um, from both sides of this uh, battle. I, I kind of feel like because these guys have played with each other in the past, they kind of know each other a little bit. And there's a certain level of respect, despite all the uh, obvious uh, politics on both sides that are kind of driving the war effort. Yeah, I think um, it's not completely gone, but it's de- definitely minimal. Um, you know, all the all the trash talking aside, because it is a PvP environment and people love to trash talk. All that aside, there is definitely a respect for what is going on. Um, I remember in the early stages of before the war began, when we went to set up a fob. Um, Care Bears didn't attempt to try to stop the FOB being produced. And this is because they know that it's a mistake to try to attack the FOB early. Because what's going to happen is it's it's easier to defend the FOB at the beginning versus a, a quick attack to try to wipe it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very easy to defend, actually. And what ends up happening is a lot of mistakes that tribes will do is the FOB is going to get set up before you notice. right? But it will be infantile. And if you try to take it with a minimal effort, you're going to lose everything that you sent. And they knew this. And so they didn't. They let us set up because they knew that if they tried to attack uh, too quickly or brazenly, that they would take unnecessary losses. And so we ended up building that fob uncontested um, because they respect the, the early attempt would be a mistake. And at the same time, <laughs> we respect the size of the fob that needs to be done to mm. defend against these guys. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure our fob is bigger than a lot of the Most bases, bases out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, it's what needs to be done. Like, um, I think we have a great leader um, leading this with uh, Frank from Spartans. And <clears throat> I think no one's underestimating um, the nature of these tribes. Everyone's on high alert all the time, and we know who we're fighting. This is this is us. We're fighting us, basically. It's it's a reflection of who we are as players, and and so, like you said, there's a great level of respect, regardless of the trash talk being said and the fanboys and all that. The players themselves are not making any hasty moves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, and not just us, uh, we try to watch whatever live streams there are. There aren't that many of the the fight going on, and for obvious reasons, you know, people don't want to give that, their strategies or give uh, the enemy any really forward notice of what's going to be going on. However, it appears that uh, the fights with the Care Bears have been rather uncoordinated most of the time and haphazard. You mind telling us what's been going on behind the scenes with this? Are you talking about like the assaults on the fob and things like that? Mm-hmm. Um, it's really tough. It's really tough to attack a tribe that is very well defended and that knows certain strategies. It's mm-hmm. it's also hard to um, it's hard to coordinate people sometimes, and it's hard to get things from one island to another. I mean, there's so many factors that go into any kind of assault. What I tell people, and and the other side knows this, it's not a sprint. You know, it's a marathon, and. Mm-hmm. Every push helps, and maybe people see, oh, you know, you guys have tried to push three times and you failed. Yeah, well, you know, against Cobra, we tried to push like 20 times. That didn't result in the wipe, but at the end of the day, we did wipe them. Like, it, it's just, it's how the battle has to be, because we can't just take 100 Bronos to their base and run it over. You know, um, it's It's all a process, and sometimes... Yeah, the assaults can be hasty because maybe server pop is low when we try to do something quick. But for the most part, we are trying to calculate as best as we can. Sometimes it turns out in our favor and sometimes it doesn't. Definitely. Um, so are there some new strategies you guys might have employed in this fight so far that you might be able to talk about? Uh, the meta is changing with the new dossier that's been released. So for the most part, it's nothing crazy that we're doing. It's just about um, just going beyond... What the, what the meta has been um, as far as, you know, turret bows, rafts, defenses, plant techs, getting ready. Uh, it's really hard to coordinate and to come up with metas only because of the amount of lag that goes on in these fights. <laughs> it's it's People see it on the stream and they don't understand it because you're mm-hmm. not in it. It's really easy to see, but to be in it is very different. And I think that's an aspect that is just you can't explain it. You have to live it. And you know, unfortunately, 99% of the population is not going to experience that kind of lag. But it's really hard to make plans and get them to work with that. And 
It's, yeah, it's actually been kind of interesting to watch the streams from both different sides, and both sides saying, oh my god, this lag's horrible. Why are they DDoSing the server? And uh, at the end of the day, I tend to blame the really crappy netcode more than I blame DDoSing. Mm-hmm. not saying that DDoSing doesn't happen, just that the when fights get super intense and there's all kinds of uh, players trying to load in megabases on their local clients, I just think the game doesn't handle it very well. Oh, mm-hmm. I mean, in that to touch on that one we did have already a dev overlooking the battle to make sure there was no yes. business going on and they did announce that there was no ddosing and it's just standard server lag and so you guys are aware in the black knight's home server on center um my game runs at eight frames a second right i get 150 <laughs> on any other map i get eight frames a second on our center server and that's with nothing happening right that's 20 people on the server Dino's yeah, standing because still. The, the center servers are notoriously known to constantly have that that frames per second loss. Like Absolutely. on, a, on oh, an yeah, American sure. made server, like people would come in and be like, "How do you guys even farm on this? Like we're we're just going home. Like we don't mm-hmm. even want to raid you guys." Because oh, yeah. literally, you'd sit at the main base on Center Island and you got five FPS, maybe. Like, if you watch Pepper's stream, right, he gets pretty freaking good FPS going anywhere on the island, then he goes back to the Care Bears home base, it goes down to 7. Right, mm-hmm. and the same was when he was in, in Black Knights, it was the same situation. It was, it's just, yeah. the, like, um, the Mega Tribes that own centers, the structures are so grand, and the amount of dinos are so vast, it's, there's, you know, every every dino is constantly moving, swinging a tail, eating wasting stats like there's so much going on with every unit and with especially with these mega tribes you know we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dinos like people don't understand the amount of dinos that we have and the amount of dinos that we breed constantly and how much is actually going on in the server um even when it's low population so imagine a center server for example like our home you know i'm at eight frames a second and i'm at 200 and something ping all day every day with nothing going on. Now imagine instead of 20 people that we had 100 people and we had hundreds of dino tails swinging, chomping, bullets flying, arrows flying across, like you're you're adding so much to the server load that yeah, you're you're going to get extraordinary amounts of lag. But at the same time, it's hard to optimize for something like that because a battle like this that's going on right now with Care Bears versus Spartans and company, it's it's not a common thing. It's not a common occurrence. It's very rare that these fights happen. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So, how much use have you been making of the the newest dinos, like the Hell Pig and the Uteranus, or AKA Fuzzy Rex? Oh, uh, abuse to the max. Um, mm-hmm. The the health one, it's full slot cap of uh, either Dodo or or you know meat, whatever it is, whatever we can get on it. It's mm-hmm. get it to not stop at all, and the um get the uh, the fuzzy rex to be screaming all the time it's it, you, you have to because the every every bit is going to make a difference here you know if you have uh two great snipers and one has a 250 fab and one has a 400 that 400 is going to do more damage yeah oh yeah and, yeah and so the same is applied to the dinos if your dinos are healing at a rate faster than your opponents for the most part our lines are the same mm-hmm. <laughs> i mean they were black knights so they took the dinos with them so we have the same lines. We have the same HP and the same damage, right? You know, plus or minus. And then whoever has any small advantage is going to end up winning. And so we have to abuse whatever is current and whatever is, you know, whatever buff we can give them, we have to give it to them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you guys are pretty much on equal footing when it comes to the quality of players, quality of the bloodlines, tactics. I mean, you're equal footing. I think the only real difference would be in the amount of people you can bring to a fight. I mean, we're well, both limited to the server. 100. Mm-hmm. So 50 50, hopefully. Um, sometimes it's 70 30, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think um, I wouldn't say it's equal. It's equal overall, but it's not equal in the detail. I think they have more raw PVPers than we do, but I think we have more suppliers. Mm hmm. And so in that aspect, it kind of balances out. And I mean, bottom line is these are S-class tribes fighting each other. This isn't, yeah. this isn't run-of-the-mill alpha. Well, see, what I, what I have enjoyed about the streams is the respect that is given from both sides and the fact of 
I'll take Peppers, for instance. In his first stream, when it first started happening, they had literally just finished their healing pit breeding. They were literally pumping food into them as you guys were finishing setting up the fob. And Peppers is like, this is going to be a war of attrition. And he's like, and they're not going to run out of materials anytime soon. He's like, no, no. anytime soon. He's like, literally, if BK and Spartans have to just farm for the rest of, like, months and months and months, he's like, they will do that. Because he respects the production quality that you guys can mass produce. But at the same time, he's like, we're just going to sit at our main base. Let them push us. Right, because right exactly. He's like, we know their tactics. They want us to push that fob so that they can start thinning out the herd of dinos that we have. He's like, but no, we're going to let them push us because it's much harder to be that pushing tribe, to be the invader is a lot harder than it is to be the defender in a fight like that. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, they know the strategy that we've been implying um for months and that's why i said they let us build the fob because they knew that if they tried to wipe that fob prematurely that they would lose a lot and they're very smart players and you know all all politics aside of whatever's going on these guys are good at what they do and we're good at what they do and and pepper knows that and all of them know that and and it's absolutely true um we're not going to stop farming and and they're not going to stop fighting like I think they have some really good grief squads on that team, you know, which is, it's really, it's, it's scary. Like the Mm -hmm. amount of damage that these guys can do. And obviously if like, this is a a war of mega tribes, you know, two, you know, this, this is Titans fighting each other. If, if Care Bears ever turned their attention to a regular alpha, that alpha is gone in one day at the same time. Same goes for us. So yeah, we're talking about, you know, the pinnacle of arc right now is being fought. Um, Pepper, Lomo's crew, all these guys, they're really good at what they do. We're really good at what we do. And it is a battle of attrition. It's going to be whoever can do what they do best for a longer period of time. A lot of my buddies were over on that server the other day. And I think the funniest comment I got is we're all used to seeing the item, you know, caches on people's bodies. But one of the messages I got was, we finally stabbed the whale. We finally stabbed the whale. (laughs) And um, in the screenshot, it was Peppers. And it was so hilarious because I I thought I was big and bad running out with my little fab sniper in a couple rounds. Like, Peppers had two full sets of flak, like really good flak, along with the spare pieces that normally get shot off. A fab sniper, 250 damage with 300 bullets on him compound bows with metal arrows with grappling hooks and health brews and battle tart like (laughs) all this stuff that i'm just like yeah i I mean obviously everyone knows pepper carries their own fat loots um he's known for (laughs) it he's known for it but you know in his defense um i've been watching pepper for a long time before i even joined black knights and you know one of the things that i really respect about that is he's ready for any scenario right yeah. I've, I've seen him where he's been raiding a base that was partially in the water and he always i don't know if you saw that picture it had a scuba set, yeah, in scuba it. set. Yeah. yeah right yeah and he's ready for any kind of scenario and obviously we're fighting on an island right now on 569 so he has to have a scuba set on him yeah. um you know when he was in black knights it was it was cool because i supplied him with whatever he wanted and i'm sure the same is being done to him you know here in care bears mm-hmm. well the the funniest thing was peppers griefed my server before he even joined bk and all that when he was first starting streaming and um when we originally were fighting him like he turned off the stream was yelling oh you know stream sniping stream sniping stop stream sniping me and like the way he is now, he just he doesn't even care anymore. Like his confidence mm-hmm. has gone up immensely and the fact of that he'll leave that stream on twenty four seven because it's now it's his revenue stream. Right. But not only that, like he's very confident in his skill to get that kill over the person that may be watching that stream. Right. I think one thing that people forget is like because we're around it so much we don't notice it. Um and and we're all better because of it. Like I'm much better PvP because of the people that I've surrounded myself with. But yeah, these guys are, are top tier PvPers. Um a lot of these guys have hundreds of victories in SOTF and they're really good at what they do. Like, you know, you wanna stream snipe him, it's a challenge. And you're gonna you're gonna fight him. So 
I think in that aspect, um, yeah, these guys don't care. They're, like I said, they're really good at what they do. And it's people, people, it's easy to look at the stream and say, oh, you know, he should have done this. He should have done that. It's not until you actually fight these guys that you realize, wow, they're actually really, really good at what they do. Mm -hmm. And in that aspect, you know, I, I'm pretty sure it's at the point where they're challenging anybody. Um, go ahead. Stream snipe me if you want. I'm still going to kill you. <laughs> so uh, I've heard a rumor that Care Bears have been trying to recruit from unofficial servers and even from the Twitch viewers to fight against you guys. you think there's any validity to this rumor? Oh, absolutely. Um, most of the guys that are in Care Bears started in the unofficial scene. Um, mm -hmm. They have a lot of fighting experience there. Unofficial servers tend to be more PvP uh, just because of the farming rates and things like that. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that you have to be unofficial to be good because I know plenty of official only players that are really good at PvP. But um, yeah, I think they're definitely trying to to recruit um, people from unofficial. I mean, really, if, if you can get a good gun on your side, you're going to want to do it. doesn't matter where it comes from. Yeah, absolutely. So this is war is taking quite a while. How much longer do you think this is going to I was going to ask that exact question. Like, what's the prediction? How far <sighs> do we think this is going to go? <laughs> I mean, there, there's two answers to this. There's how long I would hope it for it to go. Mm -hmm. I would love it if this thing ended tonight. I would absolutely <laughs> love it. I am processing more material in a day than an average alpha tribe can do in a month. Mm -hmm. And it's taxing mentally, physically. Um, I don't say physically, and I'm sitting in a computer chair, but it, it, it's, it is taxing mentally a lot. And that also works into the physical aspect as well. Because sitting down for long periods of time, that's not comfortable. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, we have to do what we got to do. Um, we're in these tribes because we choose to fight, and now is not the time to give up. Um, mm hmm. So to answer the question, how long do I think it's going to go? To be honest, we're looking at weeks of fighting, I think. Unless something happens where somebody messes up uh, really badly, um, I think we're looking at uh, definitely weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, we've fought tribes that have taken six weeks to overtake. And, mm. you know, just because of how we release YouTube videos and Reddit posts, it may be to the public, it seems like, oh, it was just, you know, a two-week thing. But really, it's like, you know, a six, seven-week thing, and it's just we're not posting all the information because we're keeping certain things quiet. Uh, a tribe like this, man, you know, it, it could go on for a really, really long time. I mean, this yeah. is, like I said, this is PvP at the highest level. What'd they say? On one of the streams, they're like, if this goes five days minimum, he's like, I'd be shocked. He's like, it's going to go months. It's going it, to, and eventually, it's either going to be Care Bears is wiped, somehow, some way, Spartans and BK are pushed off and they're so beaten and demoralized that they never come back, or it's put on hold for something else. Maybe. Um,. It's too infantile to say, really, what happens. I mean, for all we know, we could enter into peace talks, you know, a month down the road. We don't know. Um, like you said, it, it's definitely a battle of attrition. And both sides at this moment in time, I believe, are prepared for the long run. Um, we're, like I said, we're all originally BK and family, and we know what it is to play the long fight, you know? So, um, what is the possibility that inside and on either side might be the deciding factor and who wins? At this point in time, I don't think it's as much as it was before. Um, when we first started, there was a lot of issues with it because, um, you know, there was so many alts and so many members mm -hmm. in the tribes that inciting happened. And contrary to whatever the other side will tell you we have enough evidence to back it up that it did happen and now i don't think it will happen as easy i think we've gone enough through the list but it's 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 a very real battle so we don't know i'm we have found double agents and we've removed them so who's left we don't know there are spies on both sides and there's information leakage on both sides and it's very much um a real battlefield environment yeah and so inciting is always a possibility i'm pretty sure they feel it i'm pretty sure we feel it 
we have friends on both sides. Like I was, I was telling you guys before we started the podcast, I have a friend who I've known for about a year who's over there who's chosen to side with them and you know, we're no longer friends because of it. Um, because of more than just, oh, you know, switching sides. Yeah. But that's too bad. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, it's a game and we, we have players and you know, whatever. Yeah. We, I mean, that's try. really too bad. Like you, you go back to, I, I fight my friends in PVP all the time back in all some of the older, uh, first person shooter games, but mm-hmm. it's really too bad that arc is kind of, it's like an emotional game where friendships get chiseled out and they get destroyed. Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about this in previous podcasts, but ARK really mimics real life in so many ways, whether it boils down to the fighting or even the politics in this game. You think real-world politics are bad? Try playing politics or being political in ARK. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think the issue with politics in ARK is that it's a PvP environment, and mm-hmm. so aggressiveness is predetermined. Like... It's a shoot first, ask questions later environment. Because yeah. if it's not, what's going to happen is you're going to end up losing. And yeah, it very much feels like real world politics sometimes. And in that sense, sometimes it's off putting because it's mm-hmm. a game and most people play games to not feel like it's the real world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't decide to write a Rex so that I could feel like it's. A, you know a job or feel like it's so much stress but it really is a lot of stress sometimes and i mean it's accepted at this point at- yeah stockholm syndrome at this point <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, i think we'll start ending it there but i got a listener question for everyone which side are you rooting for in the war between the care bears and spartan slash black knights and why now i won't ask the panel answer this is strictly for the <laughs> listeners <laughs> And with that, it is time to close out episode 43 of the uh. Archaeologist Podcast. <laughs> thank you to our participants this week, and thank you for listening and watching us on YouTube. If you have enjoyed this week's episode, feel free to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. You can also leave comments or questions for us in the comment section below. Goodbye and stay alive, survivors. Whoa, this is going on YouTube? What? <laughs> <laughs>